Tagana later returns claiming that he found no water. However, Marco decides that since the doctor is really tired and is passing out all the time, he agrees that he and Susan may be in the TARDIS, but just for that night, and only to sleep. And, but Ian and Barbara can't go in there, too. Over that night, condensation happens, causing water to be dripping off the walls. The doctor and Susan collect it. Ping Chu tries to make their uh, thirsty journey pleasant by telling a bunch of stories. Meanwhile, Tagana slips away into the cave of 500 eyes. It is called that because there are 250 statues, each with two eyes painted on them, and 250 times 2 is 500. So the cave of 500 eyes. Get it? Anyway, Barbara notices Tagana leaving and she follows him. There, Tagana starts to discuss plans about. I don't know, bad stuff, how to end Marco and bring the mighty Kubrickon to his knees and uh, Barbara overhears this. However, Tagana and his uh, partner soon find out that Barbara heard this and therefore they capture her and she is held prisoner. Meanwhile, everyone is nervous, wondering where, where Barbara is. The doctor and Susan decide that maybe she is in the cave, and therefore they go on to investigate in that cave, and they shout for Barbara, even though Barbara cannot reply since she is being tortured. And um, as they are searching for Barbara, Susan all of a sudden screams in horror as the camera slowly fades towards one of the painted statues and the eyes were moving. <laughs> yes, my shirt has changed again, sorry. School keeps on getting into the way, so I'm filming this throughout the week. But anyway, so back to where I was. Tagana slips from the cave of 500 eyes back to Marco and Ian and tells them that he saw Barbara go into the cave and the doctor and Susan go on after the, her. So Marco, Ian, and Tagana go back into the, ga into the cave to search for them. When they recover the doctor and Susan, Susan tells everyone that she saw two of the painted eyes move. And everyone decides to ignore it. After all, she's just a little girl. It's not like she would tell the truth or anything. But just as they leave, Ian, who knows better than to not trust children, bothers to actually look at the statues and see the eyes move again. That's when he discovers that it's all part of a special secret door behind the statue. There they find Barbara, and she is rescued. Tagana claims that Susan and Ping Chu are not doing well together, and Marco should separate them. He also claims that the doctor has a second key. Marco tells Tagana that he'll deal with all that later, and he asks Barbara furiously what she was doing in the cave, though Barbara only claims that the only reason why she went in there was because she saw Tagana go in there and she was going after him. So Tagana explains and denies that he has never been in there before, other than when Marco and Ian went on after the three uh, people before. This totally blows Marco right over, and he grabs Susan and Ping Chu and separates them, and then later Tagana proves to Marco that the doctor has a second key by showing him the doctor exiting the TARDIS. Yeah, he really did have a second key the whole time. So anyway, Marco grabs the doctor and demands for the second key. The doctor obviously has no choice but to give it to him. Marco then attempts to enter the TARDIS, but the doctor, who is of course afraid that Marco will enter, see that's bigger on the inside and faint or something, but the doctor manages to keep the inside of the TARDIS a secret 
by telling Marco that if an unauthorized person were to un were to enter the TARDIS, it would totally melt and destroy itself. Marco is dumb enough to believe this and decides not to enter it. However, he then has two guards take him away. During the rest of their journey, they have the doctor. Um, they have the doctor, Ian, Susan, and Barbara all locked up, all locked up in a tent with a guard, and guarding the tent, even if they did try to escape. Meanwhile, Tagana meets a man called Akomat and tells him that there are two more nights before they attack and everyone is to die. Akomat says that he's going to hide in the jungle as they journey through the bamboo forest for the following two nights and he's going to wait for Tagana's signal to attack. Meanwhile, Ian has found a way to cut out the to cut his way out of the tent. His original plan is to knock out the guards so that they can escape. But uh, as he pushes the guard off where he's sitting, he is shocked to find that someone has beaten him to it. The guard is already dead. Doctor, Susan, and Barbara all figure out that this dead guard must mean that this is the start of a trap for all of them to be killed. Even though that they all really want to get to the TARDIS and escape, they decide not to just let Marco die, And even though they have the knowledge of their future death. So Ian wakes up Marco, who wakes up to Ghana, and Ian tells them, yes, they tried to escape, but none of that matters because they're all about to die. That's when Akomat and all of the other people begin to attack, though Marco, Tagana, Ian, and everyone else had already armed themselves. Tagana is forced to kill Akomat because, well, if he let him go right in the front of the face of Marco, that would cause him to get suspicious. Besides, I don't think that he even cared. I mean, like, he's a bad guy. You I know, mean, like, a lot of people think, well, there's no such thing as a bad guy because bad guys think they're the good guys and the good guys are the bad guys. But no, like, the way to tell if someone's a good guy and someone's a bad guy is the good guys care about others. The bad guys will just kill someone and not care at all, even if it was a close friend. So anyway, everyone else flees and everyone gets to live. So, so... Marco is about to send them off into the tent again, but then Ian reminds them what they had just done for them. So Marco decides to that since Ian kind of just saved their lives, in return Marco will allow Ping Chu and Susan to share their own company again, and they will all be able to roam freely instead of being trapped in a cramped tent. Then the TARDIS gang finds out that Tagana must be the source for all of their previous troubles, including Barbara being kidnapped in the cave and the water running out and everything else. Sorry, there's just a little note here with the summary of what happened. So, then a person named Ling Tuo something had just come from Shang Tu, which is 300 miles away, in just 24 hours. He did this by changing horses every three hours just to deliver a message that Marco and his gang needs to pick up the pace. So as soon as they get to Shang Ting, Marco obeys and speaks them up. Meanwhile, Tagana had bribed a man called Kingyu to steal the TARDIS. Ping Chu and Susan have a conversation and Susan starts to tell Ping Chu how their home is far away. When Ping Chu asks them, well, you can still reach it from Venice, can't you? Susan tells them that she can't. And that's when Ping Chu realizes that if they don't get their hands on one of those two keys, 
they will never see their home again. Ting Chu feels too generous and tells Marco that dinner is ready or something. And Marco then gets up and leaves. That's when Ping Chu reveals the hiding place of one of the keys in, uh, hidden in a book. She takes it and shows it to Susan. But Susan is shocked, saying, Well, Ping Chu, you promised Marco that, but then Ping Chu interrupts that she only promised not to tell anyone. She didn't promise not to give anyone the key. She just promised not to tell anyone. And since Susan, Barbara, Ian, and the doctor all don't know where it was, then technically she did keep her promise. Though then Susan, of course, has to keep a promise in return that she'll say goodbye to Ping Chu before they leave. So Susan tells Ian, Barbara, and the doctor all about how they can escape now. However, as they're about to leave for the TARDIS, Susan all of a sudden realizes her promise to say goodbye to Ping Chu. She runs back to let Ping Chu know that they're leaving right now. But this just creates stalling time, and the Doctor and Ian and Barbara are forced to wait for her. And that was a big mistake. It would have been better if just Susan just broke the promise and took off. Because when Susan tried to sneak back to the TARDIS, Tagana catches her and threatens her with a knife. <laughs> different house, but whatever. So, Ian tells Tagana to let go of Susan, but Tagana tells everyone to get out of the TARDIS. Then Marco arrives, and everyone is forced to confess. The doctor hands the key back to Marco, and Tagana hands Susan back to the doctor. Ian gets into a private spot with Marco, and tells him how the TARDIS can cross time, and not just space. But Marco doesn't believe him, and tells him that he knows Ian is a liar, because he knows that it's not Ian who took the key to get into the TARDIS, it would have to be Ping Chu, since she was the only other one who knew where it was. Ping Chu hears this and flees the caravan. Marco lets Ian know that if he did believe him, he would give him the key. So Ping Chu has fleed the caravan. When the gang find that out, Ian and Tagana offer to go looking for her. But Marco says that he wants Ian to go looking for her because when they're going to meet Kubla Khan soon. Just a reminder, Kubla Khan is the one who Marco is trading the TARDIS for so that he can go home. And he wants Tagana to be there. So Ian recovers Ping Chu at a place called Shang Ting, where she has ridden there alone. Meanwhile, Susan and Barbara are comforting Marco. As way back in the first episode, Ping Chu informs Susan that she is going to be marrying a man who is in his 70s. And Barbara and Susan say that they do not want to see Ping Chu forced to do that. Tagana is then, then offers to go after Ian and Ping Chu to find out what has happened to them, in which Marco agrees. Eventually they arrive at Kubla Khan. The doctor is a bit angry at him because, you know, he's almost losing the TARDIS and all. But eventually Kubla Khan and the doctor soon find out that they're about around the same age or something, and then they soon manage to get along. Meanwhile, Ian and Ping Chu later find the bandit out on the road when they're trying to get back to Marco, and they force him to admit the truth. However, just after that, Tagana finds them, and now that he knows that they both know the truth, he threatens to kill Ping Chu. Oh, Finally, we're at the final episode of Marco Polo, episode 7. So there's this big fight between Marco and Tagana, and then eventually it's interrupted when a man named Ling Taiyu, and a bunch of soldiers come by and break the fight. And again, even though Tagana is kind of in between the rock and the hard place, he manages to talk himself out of it. Again, will this guy ever get caught? Of course he will, he's a bad guy, but... Whew of a spoiler there, but hey, this entire thing is spoilers, so don't worry about it. 
So, um, the doctor and Kublai Kong are playing this chess game, and then the doctor says that if he wins, he wants his TARDIS back. Though Kublai Kong is just like, what, that? That thing is useless. I have a whole bunch of treasures here. Take some of those. And the doctor is just like, no, I want the TARDIS. So Kublai Khan agrees. Unfortunately, the doctor loses. Anyway, so when Kublai Khan asks Marco how the TARDIS works, Marco claims that he didn't really own it. He just wanted to trade it so that he could go back home. Kublai Khan is not impressed and says that Marco does not regain his trust, he will be banished from the court. Tigana comes back and completely betrays Marco, just saying, and he tells Marco how he stole the TARDIS and punished the doctor, Ian, Susan, and Barbara when they tried to steal it back. However, Ian and Ping Chu tell Kublai Khan that Tigana has been betraying, like, everything and everyone. And Kublai Kong is not sure who to believe, or if to believe both of them, or just not to believe either of them. And he says that it will be judged in the matter of court. So things are going a little better for Ping Chu after she finds out that, they, that she doesn't have to marry the 70 year old man as he drank something and got killed. Meanwhile, the doctor, Barbara, Ann, and Susan are all in prison. Again. So anyway, they, they realize that someone has to stop Tigana as he's probably going to kill Kublai Khan to create an easy victory for known guy, the man who he's working for, and his army. So, everyone attacks their guard and breaks free. They, they all tell Polo about their theory. However, Marco then immediately flees to the throne room. This turns out to be the perfect time for Marco to go there, as Tigana is trying to kill Kublai Khan at that moment. So, Tigana and Marco have this big sword fight, and then soon Tigana is defeated by the great Marco Polo. And Tigana is then informed that he will be killed by Kublai Khan's men. However, he then grabs a sword and commits suicide, as he'd rather kill himself than be killed by them. Ian then walks over to Marco and is about to apologize for having one of his greatest friends betray him the whole time, though Marco tells him not to say anything, and he quickly gives him the key. The doctor, Ian, and Barbara then race for the TARDIS, and Susan is trying to give a meaningful goodbye to Ping Chu, but Ping Chu quickly breaks it up and tells Su that he needs to go into the TARDIS now. So the four time traveler, travelers go back into the TARDIS and take off. Then Kublai Khan and Marco then discuss how it was true the whole time of flying caravan. Kublai Khan tells Marco, There's something for you to tell your friends in Venice. No, my lord. They would not believe half the things that I have seen in Cathay. But what is the truth? I wonder where they are now. The past or the future. And so leads to the first Doctor Who episode to not end on a cliffhanger. Anyways, well, I heard that a lot of people think that's really good. Uh, it has been rumored that that uh, YouTube might have found it, but it's been rumored for like a year now, if not more, so I don't think that's true or anything. But honestly, I don't really find historical stuff that interesting. I think that I have this sort of history block. I mean, like, I do like the Romans as a historical story from season two, but I think the only reason is that it's comedy. I mean, The Myth Makers from season three is also a comedy historical story. It's just, again, it's missing, just like this episode. So it's hard to watch and to understand what's going on. But yes, um, if you're really into history, then yes, by all means, watch it. If you're okay with history, then you may want to give like the first three or four episodes a watch. If you got hooked, then you can finish it. And if you have a history block like mine, it's probably not worth your time. But if you're a Whovian and you want to watch every episode of Doctor Who, again, watch it. I mean, like, you could buy the audio CD if, if you want to hear the whole story, or you, if you want to see the whole story, you can buy Loose Cannon's Reconstruction. There's also a little 30-minute recon by the BBC 
on the new beginning box set. So yeah, you can buy any of those. I'll, I'll discuss that a bit more on my final review for season one. But anyways, yeah, so I'll see you next time. We'll review story number five, The Keys of Marinus.